If you fear your only available water source is contaminated to a point where you're not even trusting your water filter, then maybe it's time to look at one that has a reverse osmosis filter like this unit from Itahill. If you're interested, keep watching. Before we get started, I want to thank Itahill, at least I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, for reaching out and offering to send this water filtration unit to me so that I could share it with you. So when they did make that offer, I didn't accept right away because honestly, I've reviewed a lot of water filters on my channel and I didn't think there was going to be any technologies that would impress me and make it something more that I could share with you or was interested in sharing with you. So I took my time to look at the reviews on this unit and to look into the technology that it uses and to be honest I was very impressed. So it uses reverse osmosis. Now I thought I knew what reverse osmosis was all about. Clearly I didn't. It is much more impressive and much more effective than even I realized. And it was based on that information that I decided yes I'd take a unit and at least share it with you. Now there's a couple things we want to say before we get started. First off let's be clear this is not a backpacking unit. At best it is a car camping unit. Where I see it fitted in ideally is for somebody who has a need to filter what they know to be very unsafe water and they just have no other way of making it clean and uh, yeah so it could be more considered a prepping type of a unit something to use in case of emergencies now here's the fun story that goes along with this about two weeks after the unit arrived we had an event happen here in Halifax that I had just never experienced before our water filtration plant shut down and they had to uh, put in place a boil water order for all of the area around where I live, not the entire of the municipality, but at least the area where I lived. Apparently when the power shut down, their backup generator did not go into play and as a result a lot of water went into the system that had not been properly treated so they couldn't guarantee that it was safe. Now boil orders or boil water orders. Um, you know, to me, they're a waste of time and energy uh, if to boil water if you have a filter. And I thought, what a perfect time to test this unit out. For, so for two full days, all the water we drank, I ran through this unit. Now, in full disclosure, chances are I could have got by with a water bottle type filter. Likely the only pathogens in the water were protozoas, which yes, they'll make you sick, but they're not that dangerous overall. But this unit certainly took care of that and it goes a lot further than that. All right, so we'll get into that as I take you down to the tabletop, go over this unit's key features. Of course, I'll show you what it came with. I'll talk about its specifications quite briefly, but then we'll get it outside and I'll do a demonstration with it. All right, I want to go over what came with the unit before we get into its key features and its specifications. So some of which I can show you, some of which you'll have to take my word for because of course they're installed in the unit itself. So the unit does come with two 6,000 milliamp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries installed. Now they're not accessible and non-replaceable so if you run or if they fail on you you're going to have to send this back unit back for repair. But having said that they have a expected lifespan of at least 3,000 full cycle charges and uh, yeah I don't know that anybody's going to put that this unit through that much work. Certainly I won't if I especially if I keep it for emergencies as opposed to everyday use. Now what I can show you, I can show you or at least partly show you, it comes separate from the unit but then you install are two water filters. You can see them right here. They're installed. You place them down inside and you turn them to lock them in. One of those units is the hybrid filter. I'll talk more about what the hybrid filter is all about and the other is the reverse osmosis filter. So that's where they go in and of course they are replaceable because they do have a limited lifespan. Again I'll mention that in a few moments time. This is just a carrying handle right here. That's all that is to show you. Now I'm just putting the unit aside for a second so I can show you the other things that it came with. So yes it does come with the manual. The manual is pretty good. It's all pictorially laid out. Um, it's a good idea to watch videos maybe like mine but maybe others that have a bit more detail that I'm going to put in mind on how to use this because there's a bit of a learning curve. Not a great one but a bit of a learning curve until at least the first time you use it and then you get used to it. Neat little thing. I looked at this for a few minutes and I said, what is that? Then I realized it's a type of a wrench and this would be used to help remove those filter units from inside of the basic model or the machine itself. If they get stuck, you can just put it on, turn it and they'll loosen it. So we'll put that aside. 
This is three separate hoses. Now, why three separate hoses? One is obviously the inlet hose, this one here, and it's quite long. And this is the one you'll put into your dirty water. And then the other two, one blue and one white, you'll see them hooked up in a minute. One is for your clean drinking water, and the other is for your semi-clean water. Now, semi-clean does not mean drinkable with any degree of risk. It's not recommended for drinking at all. It is, however, safe for use for things like uh, hand washing, washing clothes, things like that, but as long as it's not internal consumption. Why two streams of water? I'll get into that in a minute. And the last thing to share with you is this storage transport type of a bag. It's kind of one of those uh, backpack, shoulder type of a bags. It has drawstrings on it that will, uh, you know, you can pull it tight and then you can, oh yeah, one more thing. I almost forgot that. Charging cable, USB type C double-ended charging cable. So a fast charge. So it will accept fast charging, which of course is important, especially when you have two 6,000 milliamp hour batteries. It can take a while to charge those up, even in this unit, but if you have a fast charger, it is that much faster. All right, let me put some of this out of the way and bring the unit back into play, and we'll go over some of its key features. Okay, the claims that are made for this are just about unbelievable. If they were not verified and backed up by a whole lot of research, which is available on their website, Ida Hill's website, for you to take a closer look at if you really want to get into the nitty gritty. I'll tell you, I did take a look because to be quite honest, the type of testing that I wanted to do with this, and I did some, and well, what I show you today is risky enough. If it was not something I had complete confidence in. I mean, they're, they're saying you can, you can uh, filter your own urine back, back into something you can drink. Basically, this will take out everything out of the water, absolutely everything, even the minerals, not just all the biologicals and all the chemicals and the heavy metals, but even the minerals that we normally want in our water. This will take them out. How it does that? Let me get to that in a moment's time. So it has NSF, ANSI 58 rating, FDA rating, CE rating. I'm not even sure what all of these are, of course. EMC rating, PSE rating, FCC rating, ROHS certified. Okay, there is a full description of all the ratings and the research on their website so that you can dig a little deeper into it. But this will, and there, this is by no means a full list of the type of things that it can remove, but it can easily, easily remove things like the parasites, the protozoas, Cryptosporidium, Giardia, bacteria, viruses, and I'm going down in sizes because the smaller they get, the harder they are to filter, of course. Heavy metals and pesticides, and like I said, just about everything else. All right, let's talk about the two filters that are inside this unit. Number one is the hybrid filter. I'll put a picture on the screen of the two filters because again they're inside now and uh, uh, installed and I didn't want to uninstall them just to put them back in again for the demonstration. So I'll just put pictures on the on the screen right now for them. So the number one is a hybrid filter and the hybrid filter according to their description is a polypropylene cotton. Now, I know what that means, and basically it is a hollow fiber tubing used in most water filters that we buy, like the Sawyer, that has a 0.1 micron diameter tubing, and that's what all the water runs through in order to filter it. And that is small enough to take out just about everything. It will certainly take out parasites and bacteria, may not take out viruses, and certainly is not rated for taking out heavy metals or parasites. But they paired that in that filter, the hybrid filter, with an activated carbon filter. Now, between the two of them, it's the best way to look at it is as a pre-filter, a filter that will take out a lot of the stuff that you want out of your water before it even reaches the reverse osmosis filter. So it is a pre-filter, and that's the stuff that will take out all the heavy metals, the pesticides, the organic compounds, so and you know, and it gets rid of flavors and things as well, of course. So that is the hybrid filter. And I said it to look at it as a pre-filter because the water that's drawn into this unit first passes through that hybrid filter and then is split into two streams. One is the offshoot, the water that is partially purified, and, and, and that's not a fair representation. It is cleaner than it was coming in. Maybe that's the best way to say it. 
but the rest of the water then passes through the uh, reverse osmosis filter. Now here's the thing. A regular Sawyer type filter, and I looked this up just to confirm, has a hollow tube fiber of 0.1 micron. Okay, this is important, 0.1 micron. That's how small the fiber, the holes are in the fiber. A reverse osmosis, osmosis filter has pore sizes of 0 0.0001 microns. That should impress you because it certainly impressed me. This will not allow anything other than the molecules of H2O water to pass through it. But in order for that to happen, it has to be done under pressure. And that's what the majority of this machine is all about. It is a pump that draws water from a dirty water source, forces it through the filters, and out through into your clean collection bottle or bag or container, or whatever it is you're using. So this will take virtually everything out. Now, even one review I looked at said, if you're going to be using this on a regular basis, you got to know that some of the mineral nutrients that we actually need in our water are also removed. You're, not, you're going to have to look at some type of replacement theory, uh, therapy if you want to use this on a regular basis. But honestly, for an emergency, for even a week or two or however long that you're likely to use it, probably in all the food that you get, you're getting enough minerals. You don't have to worry about replacing placing it in your water as well. So it is a electric pump, as I mentioned. It has an electric self-priming mechanism, and it will, well, the flow rate, as you'll see, it's not really fast. They rate it as 17 fluid ounces or 500 milliliters of drinking water per minute. So it's not really fast, but it's not unreasonable as well. During that, quote, emergency, that boil water order we had for our area, um, you know, it was enough to do this once a day. We just had a couple of pitchers. I waited, probably took me 20 minutes, half hour, to filter the water into those pitchers, and that was good for drinking. The water from the tap was still good for drawing clothes and things like that, but, you know, you just didn't want to drink it, make any meals with it, brush your teeth or anything. This certainly purified it. It was probably overkill. No, it was overkill, honestly. But it was nice to know that I had complete confidence in this, uh, this device using it. All right, quickly, let's go over the physical specifications for this unit and the performance specifications. Then, of course, we'll get it outside and do the demonstration. So physical specs. Remember in the opening I said this is not a backpacking unit. Not at all. Not at 13 pounds it's not a backpacking unit. 5.8 kilograms. I mean it's not overly heavy but it's not something you're going to take with you on your back or probably even in a four-wheeler or any type of conveyance. Maybe if you have a four-wheeler like an ATV you'll take this if you really need this type of capability. Otherwise, you know, consider something for car camping or home use for emergencies. Height top to bottom 9.25 inches 235 millimeters width across is 7 inches 180 millimeters and the length from end to end is or 22.75 inches or 300 millimeters. Now, as far as the performance specifications, I mentioned the two filters, one being the hybrid filter, the other being the reverse osmosis filter. The hybrid filter is rated to clean between 300 and 400 gallons of water, whereas the reverse osmosis filter will clean between 600 and 800 gallons of water. And uh, I'll let somebody else do the math to turn that into liters. Actually, I'll do that and I'll put it in the video description. So why, why the difference? Why 300 to 400 for the hybrid and 600 to 800 for the reverse osmosis? Obviously, if the hybrid is your pre-filter, and that's not what they're calling it, that's just the best way to describe it, then it's going to stop the majority of the contaminants from reaching the reverse osmosis filter. By the time it re reaches the reverse osmosis filter, it's pretty clean already. Therefore, the life uh, extent, uh, lifespan of the reverse osmosis is going to be considerably longer. Now, that's the average lifespan for those two filters. If the water that you are drawing from 
is not all that contaminated, I mean, it looks clean, it means there's no floating stuff in it, then you're going to get a longer lifespan. But if you know it to be heavily contaminated from industrial or, or agricultural runoff or anything else, or you know it to be very stagnant and has any number of contaminants in it, then, of course, this is probably the, the safe limit is between three to 400 gallons for the hybrid and six to 800 gallons for the uh, reverse osmosis and the output uh, for per charge. Now, this is important, of course, is how much can you actually put through this unit before you have to recharge it? Well, it's rated at nine gallons. I can't confirm that because I honestly, I did not run the battery down to zero uh, before I recharged it. You know, after each day of using it and getting probably 10 liters of water, out of it, I, I recharged it, so why not, and keep it charged up. So I did not run the battery all the way down. Oh, I mentioned a minute ago, 3,000 full life cycles, actually, Ida Hill uh, says the batteries will have about 2,000 full life cycles, an average of 15 years for most people's uses. Honestly, for me, it would last longer than that. I cannot see using this on a daily basis that I need to uh, worry about the batteries dying over a longer period of time. All right, the only other thing I'm going to say is just a few things that I can't demonstrate with it, but I think is worth knowing. So first off, the, the, what they call the draw height. So how far below the level of this unit can you place the input filter to draw water? Because, of course, that's important. If you're trying to put this over the side of a, a bank or into a stream, then you want to be able to ha know that the electric pump is going to draw. Well, you can get a 10-foot height differential. So, you know, that's quite big, 3 meters, 10 feet, between where the filter editor or the... This thing, I guess you might call the weighted pre-filter. This really is the pre-filter. It's a weighted thing that uh, actually draws in and keeps some of the heavier floaty stuff out of it. So that can be 10 feet below the level of the pump and still draw water up. I think that's pretty good. All right. I think that is everything I need to tell you about the unit. The only thing I'm going to tell you now is about the testing, and then we'll get it outside. Okay, when it comes to planning the test for this unit that I could do for the video, I gave this a lot of thought, and I wondered, how can I do a good demonstration of this unit and look for something that I knew was heavily contaminated, a water source that was heavily contaminated, but something that didn't involve me going into an industrial area and carrying this through the woods to get to it. So I thought about this for a little bit of time and I realized I had a heavily contaminated water source right outside my house, my rain barrel. Now, I know a lot of people don't give this a lot of thought, but think about it for a moment. And I did some research on this and I, can, I will put the sources for this information that I'm going to share with you right now, but rainwater is a heavily contaminated water source. And that's even before it sits in your rain barrel for a number of days. To start with, the rain that falls out of the air, as clean as you might think it is, is actually scrubbing the air of contaminants itself. So any uh, smog or smoke or pollutants in the air, the rain is actually grabbing them and pulling them downwards to the ground. Now, that's great for cleaning the air out, but if that's the water source you're going to be drinking, you got to know right off of the top with no other added contaminants, it's already something you should not be drinking. Now, it hits my roof. I live in the city, by the way, and of course there is more pollution in the city. It's not that we're really all that bad, but there's certainly more pollution here in the city than there would be in rural or urban or country areas. So the roof of my house would be covered in dirt from the pollutions and things that lay on it bird droppings, any number of things on the roof of my house. So when that already dirty rain hits the roof of the house and runs down into the gutters and then down the drain pipe into my rain barrel, it's heavily contaminated. It's going to have everything that you don't want to have. In fact, the sources that I quoted said this should not only be not consumed by people, it should also not even be used to water plants that you're later going to eat, any type of a vegetable, because the vegetables can draw up some of those contaminants, especially the heavy metals and the pesticides and the things that are in the water. So when I take you outside to the rain barrel, it may look clean because, of course, it's been sitting and it's clear. In other words, the floating stuff has dropped to the bottom. But trust me, the water itself is heavily contaminated. Now, 
Just to make it worse, this is always kind of fun. We know that there's all kinds of uh, organic uh, contaminants in there as well. There's going to be viruses and bacteria. That's pretty much a given, as well as protozoas that are in there. But when I looked in it uh, yesterday or the day before, I looked and I could see mosquito larva floating around on the top and a skim, some kind of oily surface on top of that again. I said, oh yeah. Yeah, do I really want to try this out of myself? Well, if I don't have the confidence of filtering that water and actually drinking it, how can I recommend that you use it for anything else? Now, just to add on that, we've been in excess of 32 degrees for the last five days here. Anything in there is just cooking and just propagating like crazy. Yeah, this is not water that I would filter and trust to drink with anything else other than this filter. So that's the test we're going to do. Let's get outside and do it. All right, I've set up outside of my home. This is the rain barrel downspoke going into it. Actually, my rain barrel is just a garbage can is all it is. It's cheaper than buying one of the other rain barrels, and it works for us. And I have a small table set up here with the Itahill filter sitting on it, and I have some jars. And the uh, jars, one is, well, uh, well, let's start with this. I think what I will do is bring the camera over so you can see inside of the rain barrel so you can see just how dirty it is. It is. I have one mason jar so I can scoop some of it up to show you what it looks like before I filter it and, and then we'll set it up to do the demonstration with. So I'll just uh, bring the camera over, show you inside, but I'm, I'm going to have to reposition the camera a little bit after that so that you can see everything that's going to take place. All right, I think I'll even go a step further. I put a stick inside of the barrel so that I can stir it up a little bit. So. Gina has been using this water for watering plants, not vegetables. So it's down a little bit. We haven't had rain now for, I don't know, almost a week. And except for today, scorching hot temperatures. So toss the stick aside. Okay, let's see if I can scoop some of this water out. So you can see the floaties going around inside. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's not very appetizing looking, is it? All right, I will reposition the camera so that you can see a little bit closer what I'm doing with the filter. Okay, something else I've just noticed is it's starting to get a little windy out here, so hopefully the wind noise doesn't override what I'm trying to say here. So the filter is set up here, water bottle here. This is going to be my waste water, the water that they consider uh, household water for washing, cleaning, that type of thing, but not for drinking. And then, of course, I've got a drinking glass for the rest of it. Now, I've got my hoses here. Something else I did not cover in the video so far are the buttons on the side of the device itself. And I don't think there needs to be a whole lot of detail. Obviously, this is the charging port up at the top here. That's the on off. And then these are two buttons that are going to be used for resetting the filter. So when you replace them, and then there's a series of lights. The reason I'm not going into detail is because that's laid out well in the manual. And my explaining it now is really not going to mean a whole lot to you. You're going to have to read it again anyway when you get uh, the device at home. All right, on. Uh, the wind is really starting to pick up here. I want to make sure that everything stays in frame. Here's the input end. So this is where I'm going to put the hose into the device, the collection hose we'll call it. And it is a long hose as you can see. Plenty long to reach just about any water source that you're likely going to use this with. Got it tied in a knot. Let's drop the weighted pre-filter into the rain barrel. And this screws into the port at that end. There we go. I will say it's a little bit awkward. It's not something that goes... I mean, it does go in well enough. It's just could be a little bit easier to spin it, I guess, on its axis. So, all right, the hose is all inside. Now, on the other end is where the two output hoses are going. So, now, I've seen versions of this where it comes like a cassette, and you just attach it on. This is the version they sent. Whether the other one is updated or this is the updated, I'm not sure. But it's just a flap hose to cover over it. 
and you get two hoses. First off, this is the drinking hose. The white one is the drinking hose, and the white goes on the left side. Make sure you get this correct when you're doing it for yourself. And all you need to do is really is just push it in. All right, so that's the drinking hose. Now, I won't, uh, you can see it's stiff. It's not a loose, flexible hose. I won't put that in the glass until we're ready. This is the wastewater hose, and that goes in on the right side. Easy enough, right? Now, trying to keep this in frame. Wastewater into the mason jar, without tipping it over, that is, somehow. And clean water into the drinking glass. It's a self-priming device. It takes a minute for it to really get kick in once you turn it on, but let's turn it on. Pump is running. I'm already getting wastewater. Of course, that means that the water from the rain barrel is running through the hybrid filter before it diverts any cleaner water into the drinking glass. So from any source of water, a good amount of it is going to come out as not wastewater, but secondary water, household water, I guess, is the way to look at it. There we go. All right, now I'm getting drinking water. My mason jar is almost full, actually. I'm seeing cloudiness in it now. All right, the mason jar is full. I'm just going to let the rest of the wastewater go down off of the side of the table there while my clean drinking water fills up. Wow. All right, that's enough for demonstration purposes. Let that dribble off. Okay, let me just put the filter aside because I want to show you the three different jars of water together. Water directly out of the rain barrel water that's been put through the hybrid filter and semi-cleaned and drinking water. Now, without losing frame, I need to reposition the camera so you can see me drinking this. So all I'm doing now is just tipping it up so that you can see me in frame. Let's hope this works. Very good. Clear, I mean crystal clear. Let me bring that over to the camera. Crystal clear. I don't think my tap water is that clear. Again, staying in frame. Cheers. <laughs> nothing. No flavors, nothing. Actually tastes better than my tap water does. That is simply amazing. All right, I think that's enough of a demonstration. Let's wrap this video up. All right, let's wrap this video out. So obviously I have faith in this unit. I mean, I certainly would not have trusted any of the other filters in my collection to have filtered the water that I would then drink when I took it out of the rain barrel. So I do have faith in this unit. Certainly the technology speaks for itself. That reverse osmosis filter makes all the difference when it comes to severely contaminated water. Now, let's just put this in perspective. This is not something I'm gonna use on on a very regular basis. This is going to be reserved for times when I absolutely need to have the very best of uh, filters. For the most part, when I go into the woods around here, yeah, I'm pretty sure there are biological contaminants in it. And it maybe in a few cases, there may be some chemicals or pesticides, but honestly, I'm deep enough in the woods that that's not likely the case. If, even if it is, it's in such small quantities that the filters, at least some of the filters I have, have not only the 0.1 micron hollow core fiber tubes which will take care of almost everything they also have some of the other some of them have carbon activated carbon filters between the two that usually covers just about everything that i'd be concerned about but that's not the case for everybody there are a lot of people that know the water sources in their area are heavily contaminated and unless they use some type of a good 
high-tech water filter like reverse osmosis that they are putting their health at risk and that's where this unit comes in it's not going to be for everybody it's not a hiking unit as i've mentioned now three times but it is a unit that you can count on when you really need the very best so that's the way i'll put it out there okay i'm going to be putting the links to where you can take another look at the itta hill filtration unit as well as the specifications and all the other information i spoke about in the video description but if you have any comments or questions put them in the comment section below but until next time get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference bye for now